Good evening, my friends. I didn't make it back with a marathon reading of Psalms. It's funny how an old bald headed redneck guy can stay so busy. But I do. We got more snow and rain coming. So I put my truck back in the garage. Last time I went to town, whenever that was, I don't remember. But anyway, I left it out because uh, a neighbor said that he needed a ride, needed a ride to work the next day, and it's such a pain to get out and put back in. I just left it out since I was going to be taking him to work the next day. <coughs> Well, that may be why I had it out the last time I had it out. I don't remember. But anyway, he disappeared. So I guess he got a ride with somebody else and forgot to tell me. And it's just been sitting out there. But it's tucked up in the garage now and it won't get rained on or snowed on. And I'm tired. I think I'll go to bed early tonight. Acts chapter 18 is where we're picking up this evening. And it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them and because he was of the same craft he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers. I guess a lot of people lived in tents back then and I may be before long <laughs> if I can find a piece of property in a warm location I may buy me a tent, but I sure want out of here. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when, I, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to behave. Yeah, I am going to say something. I can't, I can't stay quiet. Go. This morning proved that. Goodness gracious. I hadn't looked, checked my subscriber count, but I bet I lost 20 more after that video. <laughs> it says, Paul, the Apostle Paul, persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Dear God, Abba Father, please don't strike me dead for saying this. I don't agree with that. It's the Holy Spirit. I thought that does the persuading of the Jews and the Greeks and everyone. I know for a fact it was the Holy Spirit that persuaded me, and I am pretty sure it is he who persuades everybody, even back then, the Jews and the Greeks. But there's probably some Hebrew or Latin or Arabic interpretation that I do not know. I only know English plus Texan. I'm pretty fluent in Texan. But just the way it looks, the Apostle Paul persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. We, my friends, can't persuade anybody 
of anything re regarding salvation. We can plant the seed. Others can water it. But if it's going to grow and flourish and become something, it's going to be God that did it, not us. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. I guess I should have read the next verse too. So that kind of explains it a little bit. But in the previous verse it says, He persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. But at least in the next verse, he does say that he was pressed in the Spirit. So I sort of agree with it now. And if I think about it and study it more, I'm sure I would 100% agree with it. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. <clears throat> and he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined Horde to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the, might, in the night by vision, saying, Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. Well, I got that part down. <laughs> I never hold my peace. Even when I should, I don't. <clears throat> Still Jesus speaking. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gal Galio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one, uh, one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong, wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks tood, took Sothenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat, and Gallio cared for none of those things. And afterward, and after Paul, and Paul after this tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence unto Syria. And with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered 
into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer, to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return to you again, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. <clears throat> and when he had landed at Caesarea, <coughs> and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and that's that word I can't say again P-H-R-Y-G-I-A Phrygia I don't, I don't know anyway Paul went over yonder in order <coughs> strengthening all the disciples and a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man was introduced in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass in Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples. <clears throat> Sorry about all that, y'all. Paul said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of God, the word of the Lord Jesus, 
both Jews and Greeks, and God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sad handkerchief, the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was, was leaped on them, and overcame them and prevailed, prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews of and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell, fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was crucified. Magnified, not crucified. <clears throat> and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds, Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them all before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in a spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Dinah, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our faith. Moreover, ye see and bear and hear that not all alone at Ephesus, but most throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were so full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught gates and arch, or, Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, 
Paul's companion in travel then rushed with one, a, with one accord into the theater, and when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples su suffered him not. And certain of the disciples, certain run of the I'm not asleep. I, I lost my place while I got busy stuttering there. Well, without going back and listen where I cut off, which I'd have to stop the video to do, I'll just go back a few verses and start over. I mean, back up to verse 30. And when Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were once come. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with a hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, <coughs> Ye men of Ephesus, <coughs> What man is there that knoweth not how the, that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men which are neither no robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against man, the law is open, and there are deputies, let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything, Concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly, for we are in danger to be called in question. For this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. All right, y'all. Sorry for the... Oh, laps and pretty much everything. <laughs> oh, goodness. We just finished chapter 19 of the book of Acts. And if possible, I'll be back tomorrow. One day, one day, I ain't going to be back. Just don't know which day I won't be back. I don't know how long I've talked. I don't think there's any sleep sleep time included in there. If it is, I'm I got real problems because I don't know. I don't think I went to sleep this time. All right, y'all. Love you. I appreciate you. And I behaved pretty good this time, didn't I? Unless I was doing some sleep talking, I don't remember. Talk to y'all soon, friends. God bless you.